from beautiful East Tennessee in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains, you are listening to the Sherry Voluntary Show, and I do appreciate you spending your time with me. Today, my guest is someone that many of you may be familiar with. He has been around in the the movement for um, quite some time, and he is Mr. Matt Phillips. He is the for- he's on the board of the Free State Project, and he's the former president of the Free State Project. So welcome to the show, Matt. Thanks. Great to be here. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. So tell us a little bit about yourself and who you are and, and how you got involved with the Free State Project. So um, I actually uh, knew about the Free State Project from um, from basically from the beginning. I In college, I was getting my degree in politics at Princeton, and I did a summer internship at Cato Institute in, in D.C. And one of my fellow interns was a gentleman by the name of Jason Sorens, who was doing the same thing, but at Yale. And um, so it was a couple of years before he published the original online magazine article where he proposed sort of back of the napkin style, hey, what if instead of losing everywhere all the time, we try to concentrate our efforts in one low population U.S. state? And a bunch of other people sort of took that idea and ran with it. And so I sort of knew about it from the from the very beginning. But by that point, I um, I'd moved to New York City and I'd started a um, you know entrepreneurial career in in advertising technology, and so it was you know by the time they actually picked New Hampshire, I was sort of like okay yeah that's interesting but I can't deal with that right <laughs> now. I just started a company, uh, and I basically forgot about it for about ten years, um, and so then fast forward to about 2012 or 2013, I started. Um, I had had a successful exit um, in in New York City and <clears throat> was traveling around and sort of trying to figure out what I really wanted to do next and started, you know, going back to my original love of politics and sort of going to some various different, you know, conferences and stuff. Ended up uh, here in New Hampshire in 20, early 2013 at our uh, winter, our annual winter conference, Liberty Forum, and not really knowing what to expect um, and was just completely blown away by how many people there were and how much enthusiasm and excitement and, and community. And, um, it, I was like, wow, this is on, you know, this is actually yeah, happening. Yeah. This is a thing. Came back later that year for pork fest. And by September I was living here. Um, wow. so, um, that's sort of my, my story and, and relationship to how, or, you know, my story about how I got here. Um, and then, you know, just sort of, there's, there's a lot of different kinds of activism going on here that I'm sure we're going to talk a lot about. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, just sort of because of my my experience and my skills, I ended up joining the board uh, the following year of the Free State Project. And then a couple of years after that, right after we triggered the move, um, I took over from Carla Garrick, who had been leading it for several years. Um, so that's that's sort of how I uh, come to be here and why I'm talking to you. Great. Uh, uh, yeah, I... You mentioned something in community, which is really important to me. And I think if we're going to have any kind of, you know, libertarian like society, community is definitely going to pay, play a, a huge part in that. Um, and so I, I've, I've got several friends that uh, live in New Hampshire now that are part of the Free State Project. And they're if you're so, a libertarian, you do. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty much going to know somebody. Yeah. I, so they're all like super happy. <clears throat> I, I mean, they're, they're, they're all just... People who have that base of community that I think so many of us out here in the diaspora, if you want to say, you know, call it that, yeah. um, we sort of, we long for that. And so um, why don't you talk a little bit about some of the things that you've got going on? I know you mentioned Pork Fest, which Roger Paxton, um, who's a friend of mine, I I know a lot of people go there and they fall in love with New Hampshire and then they're like, Oh, I got to move here. But <laughs> so tell us about some of the other things that you have, um, involving community. Yeah. So the, the community is a really interesting thing and it's something I've been, um, I've been really, um, focusing on a lot the last few years. Um, you know, and to sort of start at the top layer of it, right. What we've got here, you know, this, this whole effort of free state project, right. It's, we're trying to recruit 20,000, you know, liberty minded activists to all come move to New Hampshire. And the usual formulation, you know, I'll sometimes joke, you know, the, the, the next step is we take over and leave everyone the fuck alone. Right. <laughs> um, but the interesting thing about it is that if you move here to New Hampshire, you don't have to wait for 
any kind of political effort or movement to take off or take hold or, or accomplish anything because what we've already got here is several thousand people in a community um, all around the state mm -hmm. who do the things that people who are in a community do, right? We hang out, we talk, we go to, we have events together. We, um, you know, e even, e even for those who, you know, don't make it to a lot of the events or, or even ever, they're still here and you still get a sort of a, a value or a, a comfort from knowing that there's other like-minded individuals that are, you know, friendly nearby that, you know, are supporting your same philosophy and your same perspective of the world and the way that it, that our society should be organized. And it's really hard to communicate that, you know, in a soundbite. And it's really hard to to experience it without coming here, which is why we have some of those events that we have like pork fest. Um, and like what you said, that's exactly what, you know, what the purpose of it is. And also, you know, that's exactly what happens, which is people are like, I don't know, people said pork fest is cool. I'm going to go check it out. Um, and it's sort of like our, our secret strategy to entice, you know, Liberty folks to come actually get a taste of what that community feels like, you know, when you're out in the, <clears throat> at a campground in the woods, in the beautiful white mountains of, of northern New Hampshire with 1,500 other, you know, libertarian activists, that can be pretty mind-blowing for a lot of people who, <laughs> who feel, you know, the rest of the year like they're out in the woods alone, you know, like their activism feels really lonely, mm -hmm. like they're not making any progress and they're shouting into the wind. Yes. Um, or they get it, you know here and there when they travel to go to a conference, right? Or they go to a, a convention or a meetup or whatever. Um, but that like pork fest is great. And we, you know, a lot of us love to go there and we hang out for the week, but we also meet with each other and hang out the entire rest of the year. You yeah. know, like people say, so, well, I can't, you know, they ask me, it's like, well, I can't make it to pork fest. You know, you know, should I just wait till next year? It's like, no, any random Tuesday, I can line up three things for you if you're willing to drive around the state a little bit um, for you to go and meet, meet up with people. Like yeah. there's just stuff going on all the time, all the time, all the time. Um, Porkfest is just a way to sort of like give people a sort of an excuse to go because sure. sort of they don't, you know, it's hard to wrap your head around the concept of like, wait, I can just show up next week or tomorrow or whatever <laughs> and you've got something going on it's like yeah, yeah i promise yeah somewhere I, in the state, something's going on yeah i was really um surprised I, I guess i shouldn't have been surprised but my my friend kelman who moved there just recently and he he said there's something going on here like every night of the week if i wanted to go so and mm -hmm. do something with other libertarians i could probably do that like every night of the week so i think that's and, and a if, really and if you know sometimes i look at the calendar and it's like oh like the fourth sunday of the month there's nothing going on <clears throat> if you wanted to, you could organize something, right? <laughs> like and that's what people have done here over the last 15 years that we've been doing this, right? Is mm -hmm. people are like, Oh, here's a, a form of activism or it doesn't even have to be really an act, you know, uh, a, a sort of a political activism or a philosophical act. It can just be like a social event, right? It can just right. be like, Hey, I want to have movie night and we're going to watch movies like this or whatever. Right. Right. Um, and that, or get together and play games or, you know, whatever, yeah, or that's... I want to do jury outreach. So every morning yeah. it, you know, really early in the morning because it, that's, you know, you got to be out there at seven 30. Yeah. There's a group of people that are handing out, you know, little pamphlets to people walking in for jury selection at the County courthouse. Sure. That's sure. a thing that happens. Yeah. Uh, that's so great. if you get here and you don't see the thing that is interesting to you or that you think could make a difference, great, start it. Other people, there's lots of people here who, um, aren't so entrepreneurial or into the leadership thing, but they're yeah. happy to, you know, be given, a a sign to hold or a stack of literature to hand out or, you know, to say, Hey, show up at this time on the street corner. We're going to do whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's so important what you're talking about. Cause really that's building culture as, is what you're talking about. You're, you're, you're creating a culture of freedom <laughs> mindset. And that's, yeah. that's what we have to do to change the rest of the country, or at least give ourselves a place where we can be and do that. Um, right. And, well, I, and, and community and culture are, are two really closely linked uh, concepts that I think are really important and that that libertarians don't do a great job of of being aware of and of thinking about how to how best to hack right. um, and 
they're one of my favorite. I'm also a, a, I go to Burning Man a lot, and one of my another one of my favorite oh, quotes is from Larry um, Larry Harvey, who's the founder of Burning Man. He said, "There's nothing wrong with libertarianism that a huge dose of culture and community wouldn't fix." And <laughs> right. That's exactly what we're really trying to do here uh, in New Hampshire is to sort of um, channel all of our energy into those things and to really focus it and crystallize it, and then to also um, you know, set it up as a beacon, um, for other Liberty folks to come and, uh, you know, and be part of it. Sure. Um, and another thing I just, I want to mention while I'm thinking about it is, you know, a lot of people say, well, what's the, you know, what's the end, the end goal or whatever. And yeah, sure. You know, liberating New Hampshire or, or however you, you want to formulate it, um, is, uh, you know, certainly something that we're, that we're trying to work on. As I said earlier, you know, there's also the direct benefit you get today without ever, mm -hmm. you know, if we never reduce a single tax or eliminate a single regulation, we still get the benefit today of being in this community with each other. But also there's lots of people that just aren't ever going to move for legitimate reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Family or job, or, you know, they're just so invested or they've got a small community that they're part of in, you know, Tennessee or Idaho or, or Cal Southern California, wherever you are, right. Or you, you know, you're super libertarian, but you're also a super cosmopolitan and living outside of, you know, San Francisco, LA or New York is just like not a non-starter. Right. Right. That's fine. <laughs> what we can do for those people is act as that beacon of liberty to say, hey, here's how we're doing it. And here's how we're, you know, growing our community and shaping our culture and doing effective activism, whether it's in system or out of system. Sure. And here's right. how you can, you can sort of look at and, and, take parts of or copy or, or transform um, and integrate into what you're doing wherever it is that you happen to be, whether it's in the United States or around the world. We get a lot of international folks that are interested. And of course, sure. you know, it's a little bit hard to help those people figure out how to you know, move here in a way that, you know, they can actually stay yeah. for a while. <laughs> yeah, it's not um, the easiest not, thing in the world to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just um, had a conversation with uh, Tom Walls for Liber Liberland. And mm -hmm. uh, he had mentioned they have like 10 satellite communities. And that's really, I think, part of any activism is the inspiration that you, you know, inspire other people to act. And right. so um, that's really important. And I, I think you mentioned something really important a little earlier. And that is that there are people who are happy to, you know, pass out pamphlets. And, and I think not everybody has to be the queen bee, right? You can be a worker mm. bee too. That's okay. I, I know a yeah. lot of people feel like they have to start a podcast or, you know, we're, we're not all suited for those types of things. Find what you're good at and do that. And, and it doesn't have to be like live. I think moving there is a pretty big moving activist here is a huge thing. Ask. Um, <laughs> and it's funny because we talk about it in sort of sometimes marketing principles, right? It's like, what are we selling and how do we, what's the sales cycle and all of that. And it's really hard because, it often takes people years yeah. from the time they first hear about us to the time that they actually upstakes and move. And a lot of cases, you know, uh, in a lot of cases, people are like, you know, they do what I did. I didn't, you know, don't have, didn't have a job at the time, didn't have family. Um, you know, it was pretty easy for me to just sort of be like, yeah, awesome. Right. This is what Let's I'm doing. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Let's give it a try. If it doesn't work out, whatever. But a lot of people, they have family, they have a job. Maybe they even own their own business and they've got employees. Like they can't just, right. you know, be like, Hey, we're all moving to New Hampshire now. It just doesn't work that way. Um, and there's a lot of people who move here, um, which is great. And they don't get involved and that's okay too. Like, um, mm -hmm. you know, and there, there's sort of an ongoing dialogue in our community or, you know, continuous dialogue about what, you know, what is acceptable activism or what is, you know, um, are those people just dead weight or, you know, what do they move here for? Are they just freeloading off of all, of, all the rest of the right. actors, efforts, whatever? And I don't think so. I think if you're just moving here because you like the lifestyle, you like the, you know, the, you know, the, the, you know, all the nature, you like the little slower pace of life that's here. Okay. Yeah. Like, cool. Even if you're, uh, you know, hard, you know, you're hardcore and you think voting is, is, you know, uh, reinforcing violence. the violence <laughs> right. in their system, whatever. Uh, okay. Like that's fine. Um, I, you know, if I, I hope that you show up to some of our social events, I hope that you hang out. I hope that you're online telling people about your experience. Um, also I hope you're enjoying your life. I hope you're spending quality time with your family. I hope that you're working on something meaningful, yeah. you yeah. know, with your job or, or as a hobby, whatever that is, whether it's, woodworking or, or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, those I, I, are all, you know, that, that's sort of, 
those of us who are activists, I think we sometimes are at risk of losing sight of like, what is the whole point of all of this activism, yes. right? It's to create a society where people are free yeah. to yeah. pursue whatever it is that they want to pursue as long as they're not hurting anybody else. So mm -hmm. I think it's always nice to have people who are modeling that, you know, that lifestyle or that sure. behavior that the rest of us are, you know, fighting to protect. Right. I, I absolutely agree. And, and that's what I often tell people is like there, there actually is more to life than libertarianism. Like, <laughs> like it should encompass your life. It's part of your life, but it's not, I, I know for myself um, and many of the activists that I know, just regular libertarians, we're all very passionate about libertarianism and, and there's not a lot of it we see in the world, you know, with, with the stuff that comes at us. But we have to make sure that our quality of life stays good. And I know I've, 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 I have a hard time finding that balance sometimes. So I have to pull back and go, okay, I'm making myself crazy. And, and like you say, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm crying in the desert, crying out like the like old Testament prophets or something and, and in the wilderness and nobody hears me, but, but people do. And, and what they really hear, I think even more sometimes than our words are our lifestyles. And if we're, if we're miserable, <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah, libertarians. Exactly. We're, you know, we, life is great, but we're miserable. Um, right. you know, we, we have to accept that things are the way they are. And maybe there, there are a lot of things we want to change. True. Uh, but don't let that stop you from enjoying what we do have. And we still have a really great country, honestly, like as far as quality of life goes, I mean, there's very, the, well, I don't know who beats really. Even if you look globally, right. I mean, um, you know, the rational optimist and, you know, that kind of, you know, some of like Steven Pinker's work, who's he's not yeah. super politically aligned, but yeah. he does a great job of pointing out like, hey, if you kind of look at the global trends over the last, you know, at the scale of decades or, or yeah. centuries, hey, things are getting a lot better. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is very subtly due to the free market. And right. There's a definitely an argument to be made that it's like, hey, just let that keep going and people will keep figuring it out that, you know, even for totalitarian regimes like China, they yeah. took a hard look and they were like, all right, guys, how are we going to do this? We better bring some free market up in here. Right. Otherwise, we're going to have problems. Yeah. A and, lot of times they don't even know that's what it like. I, I see people like living, you know, libertarian principles and they don't even know what that is. And that's OK. Right. Like like it's sometimes we have to go, OK, well, I, I need to speak to that person in their language. So if they need to talk about the Constitution in order to get them on board with freedom, then do it. Like right. why? You know, it doesn't it doesn't make me less of a libertarian or an anarchist in my case to to talk about those founding you know, principles that most people hold, they're a belief in that we can agree on and we can sort of hold them to that and go, hey, you know, you say you believe in freedom and yet you stand against this and this and this. You've got to make a choice then. And, right. you know, who cares what they really call themselves? Let's just get people to agree that we're not going to bother each other and take each other's stuff and hurt each other. So, <laughs> yeah, and it's, and it's, you know, we do that here in, in New Hampshire and it happens, it happens everywhere where, you know, you, you got to try to build a coalition of people around certain issues. And, yeah. you know, a lot of the people that are nominally on the left, um, you can reach out to them by talking about things like privacy and, um, you know, the drug war and, yeah. um, you know, uh, family rights and, you know, educational rights, which is, you know, gets into the weeds a little bit. But, yeah. you know, there's there's chinks in the, in the armor that you can find that, you know, allow you to to, um, yeah, connect with somebody uh, on a values basis, right? Yeah. And like, what are your values? How do we see those in the world? Yeah. We, I think libertarians sometimes, we don't do a great job of being a mirror to people. So, mm -hmm. and you know, instead of beating them over the head with a club, let's just hold up a mirror. There's a, there's a, a photograph. I used to be a photographer and there's this photograph that I just love and I really should learn the name of whoever took it, it uh, because it, it just, it moves me every time. But it's a, I think it's in Eastern Europe and there's an older woman at a protest and there's a line, there's, you know, thousands of people probably. And there's a line of police officers and they've got helmets on and, you know, pads. They don't I'm, look real anymore. About, yeah. yeah. And she's just holding a mirror. And I just thought super serenely like, here you yeah, go. Yeah, like this is you. That's... This is what you've become. This is what your ideology has made you. And that that gentle sort of 
it can be so cutting sometimes. That can be better than the club most of the time of, oh, you know. Oh, almost every time. Yeah. And, um, and it, and it, it, ch- it changes know, people of themselves. They, they make the change and you're not right. forcing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge for libertarians. And I think a lot of us, you know, come to it as, you know, are attracted to the idea initially or, or ongoing because we are, we tend to be more rationalists. And this is a, you know, something of a stereotype or an ongoing joke in our community, yeah. right? About people so who are true, on the though. spectrum. Or whatever. <laughs> but, and, and I don't, I think that, you know, like most stereotypes, there is, there are def, there's definitely a grain of truth under there. Sure. Um, but it's, I think, you know, it's like something I have to encourage people to say, okay, look at it rationally, look at it like the systematizer problem solver you are, and recognize that part of being an effective activist is being able to communicate to people, mm-hmm. okay, how do you do that really well? Well, one way is to connect with people, to listen to them, and then try to figure out what their values are, and then connect with them at that level. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's really important. And I'm often asked, why, you know, we need women in the liberty. We're like, what's, what's, and, and I think that's one of the things women can generally bring to, to the movement is that connection of, of people, like, because it's generally what women are, are really interested in are people and, and building community. And so I think that's, um, that's, you know, a side note, but I think that's one of the things that, that more women could really bring to the movement. And there's a lot of us. I mean, I, I know that people, like, it seems like there's not, and, and there's, I guess proportionally, maybe there's not as many, but there's a lot of really, really great women libertarians out there that do a lot of really fantastic work. So, you know. Well, and, and I mean, that's one of those issues, you know, talking about reaching out across the aisle. It's like if, you know, you're talking to a woman who's you know generally more on the left and you want to connect with them about something that they are passionate about, try talking about abortion or, you yeah. know, bodily you know, integrity and, and rights and ownership and that kind of thing. And you might find that there's an avenue of, of exploration there to say, yeah, that thing that you're so passionate about, whatever, we just, we just extend it a little bit, you know, farther to its logical conclusion to include all these other things over here as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's, you know, something we can talk about. Yeah. You never know what the inroad is going to be. I, I, when I, when I used to be a more religious person, uh, they, the group I was with used to say, you know, you never know what it is that's going to get someone's attention. And it, it could be something that's completely off the wall, but mm-hmm. you should always be listening. That was one of the big things, listening for that opening and, and just talk to them and, and be kind, you know, act with kindness. And uh, I think that's, you know, I'm, goodness knows, I'm not the best person at that always because it's easy Nobody in my in, in our bubble sometimes to just feel like, you know, get so frustrated with the rest of the world. But I think we have to remember that everybody is motivated by their own, who knows what their, their motivations are. So we have to remember that mm-hmm. maybe they're not thinking about things in the same terms we are. And I, I love, and I feel like it's something I talk about all the time, but it's um, Jonathan Haidt's book, uh, the I Righteous Mind. Up, yeah. <laughs> I, lo- I love that book. And the, the subtitle, I think, even says it better, is Why Good People Agree or Disagree About Religion and Politics. And, you know, it's just there's so much to a person and what makes a person up. And none of us are, you know, one single dimension. Well, and, and I think I, I was going to bring it up in the context of, you know, in that book, he sort of identifies libertarians as being really sort of almost singularly um, focused on the the, you know, he lists six or seven yeah. axes of, of sort of value, value pairs and libertarians, of course, are very much on the liberty oppression axis. Right. Um, whereas, you know, sort of liberal progressives are more on about much more about care harm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then conservatives are sort of strangely, um, you know, about all of them right. to some degree or another, you know, sanctity, um, uh, loyalty. Like, yeah. Kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that, and I think that that's something that we as libertarians don't do a great job of, of answering the, the what I call the and then question, right? It's mm-hmm. like, okay, you want to get rid of this social, you know, welfare program or the government, whatever. Then what? Right. And and the the simplistic formulation is, you know, more roads, but <laughs> I think the more the more um, important question is, okay, what about people in our society who genuinely need help, right? right. Um, you know, starting from 
they're completely and and permanently disabled and they can't do anything to take care of themselves yeah. all the way up to they're having a temporary issue they just need a little yeah. help to get back on their feet or whatever um how do we propose to take care of that well you know we talk a lot about private voluntary charity um great how do you model that in the world yeah show yeah. me where you're doing that and that can be mm -hmm. as as small and yet powerful as connecting with another individual in this moment right now and showing them some kindness, yeah. showing them some, some attention, mm -hmm. right. And saying, Hey, how are you doing? And actually caring about their answer. Yeah. I, I think those are legitimate too. Like I, I always tell people like liberals aren't crazy. Like, I mean, sometimes we, you know, all, on both Whatever. sides, re conservatives yeah. and liberals, which are neither generally neither one of those things, but you know, they're not crazy. Um, I'm in the, I'm into hoop dancing, right? So I, I, I know a lot of people on the left. Um, we like to, you know, hang out in the park and smoke weed and hoop. And, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a very hippie thing to do. But um, they're not crazy for wanting those concerns answered. Right. And, and they're not crazy for caring about what happens to other people. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. we're, we're, we're tribal animals. We evolved yeah. this way, right? We're, we are sensitive to what the other members of our, of our pack are, are how they're feeling and, mm -hmm. and how they're doing and, and wanting to, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Yes. It's like, yeah. we need to know that we're safe in, in the tribe too. Mm -hmm. Um, and that if we had a problem that there would be some, you know, there would be a safety net, you know, to yeah, help us out. Sure. Um, and that's where community comes in so beautifully. Like you were saying with the right. Free State Project there that you've got so much community there right. that even we're if you're not active. We're building up the, the critical mass to yeah. be able to have really significant impact. Right now there's a lot of smaller projects um, that people have started to try and you know chip away at little pieces here and there. Um, you know, certainly we're not ready to take on the entire burden, you know, burden of the welfare state, right. you know, right out of the gate. Um but changing people's minds about that is is a big piece of the puzzle to say, you know, I actually do believe that if, you know, after some transitionary period of uh, during which it would probably be pretty rough. But yeah. I think eventually, like we would be able to, as a society, come together and take care of the people that need to be taken care of. And in a way that's a lot more effective and scalable than the way that it's currently being done, which I think everybody on all sides agrees is is really wasteful and really corrupt and, mm -hmm. and really ineffective. Yeah. Um, you know, even people on the left who, who, you know, I think want more, you know, in a sort of unexamined, you know, perspective, want more of, more of it, thinking somehow that that will help. Right. I, I think we're just so conditioned to think that government is the answer to government problems because hello, we, you know, there's so many people are in government schools and, right, and right. Th they've taken over, they've um, created these monopolies that have really monopolized people's minds and, and the, you know, looking t outside the box to other options. And so we, we really do have a lot of uphill battles, but I think the more that we can um, do what you're saying is just act with kindness and just human, you know, humanity towards each other. It's like, I understand I'm a human first, right? And so I want to connect with you as a human and say, I'm sure that we have things that, that we're both concerned about, even if our solutions are a little different. Well, let's, let's talk about it in that way. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, I talk to people and the word libertarian doesn't even come up. Like you can yeah. talk to people yeah. about principles <laughs> if you think that's gonna, like, I mean, I often don't tell people I'm an anarchist because they get really jumpy with that. So you know, I don't need to do that. I don't need to wear it on my sleeve so that everybody knows what we need to do is, is worry about what the message that we put out individually. So I think that's yeah. really important. <laughs> so, although I, I often find myself, you know, cause I'm, I'm also, you know, I'm part of a lot of different kinds of communities, including Burning Man and Summit others. I'd love to go and, to Burning Man. <laughs> I've wanted to go for so long. <laughs> it's happening this year. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, Ovens O'Brien, she and I actually run a face, secret Facebook group for Burning Man Libertarians. So if there's any of your viewers out there that are that are secret Burning Man Libertarians, um, you know, come find one cool. of us and we'll we'll add you to the to the uh, okay to the little club. Um, <laughs> but I often find myself 
you know, I go to an event wherever it is in the country and, you know, you know hey, you know, where are you in from? Whatever, you know, LA, San Francisco, New York is, you know, primarily where everyone's from. And, you know, so I come in, I say New Hampshire and everyone's like, what? Oh, New Hampshire. <laughs> like, whoa, what do you do there? And then of course, because what I do here is politics, we talk about politics for, you know, half an hour or three days or, you know, however long the, the, the event is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I end up often being sort of the token libertarian. So I'm getting better at right. talk, you know, communicating with people and, and, and connecting with them about, you know, some of these things and what we're doing and why, how we think about it, et yeah. cetera. It's, I think it's always important to recognize that we didn't change into who we are. Most people, I know a lot of people claim it, but I really don't believe most people are born, you know, libertarians, like understanding that philosophy. Maybe we're, we're born with a freedom mindset, but I, I don't know. I don't know about all that, but I know it was a journey for me. And we have to recognize that people are on a journey and that when yeah, we talk so to them, our, our, our job is really to have the next conversation, not to win, not to have, you know, win this, the, the points or whatever, but just to have the next conversation, know that you're a place, you're a person that they can feel comfortable talking to and even disagreeing with and still walk away feeling like they're better for having talked to you. Like that's, that's really the art of, you know, how to win friends and influence people basically is. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that happens here in New Hampshire all the time. Um, you know, some people move here and they're really loud and, you know, uh, you know, they want to do all the things all at once. And the, you know, the, the natives and locals here are like, you know, (laughs) no, I'm not into that. (laughs) Other people move here. Um, and very quietly, they generally, they're focusing on one issue, you know, whether it's education or drug policy or uh, firearms, whatever the, the thing is. And they'll build up a reputation over several years of being like somebody who sort of quietly gets it done and mm. can talk to all sides and whatever. And this, this happens all the time. I hear stories about this, you know, somebody's here for 10 years and they've got their neighbors over and they've got a, you know, another free stater, you know, and free state project comes up and they're sort of talking about it and their neighbors are like flabbergasted. Like, wait, you're a free stater. Like I had no idea. <laughs> you're like, one of those people. <laughs> it's like, yeah, most of us are. Yeah. Um, you hear about the, you know, the crazy ones who come in like, you know, seagull style activism, <laughs> they, you know, flap their wings and squawk a lot and shit all over everything. Um, but there's plenty of people who just sort of keep their heads down and do their thing. And, um, and there's a lot of people who aren't, you know, they didn't move here. They were born here, but mm-hmm. they're just as much a part of our movement as, you know, somebody who moved here. And, yeah. um, they're, you know, a lot of them do the same thing, you know, they're just quietly kind of doing their thing in yeah. whatever lane they're in. Yeah, not yeah. that contribution to, I think, the the general society is can't be overstated. Like, it's so important for people to, to have that culture of people who just, okay, agree that we're, we're going to leave each other alone, we're going to let each other live their lives. That is, I mean, I live in East Tennessee, okay, it's like, Bubba heaven over here. And you, you see all the time people driving down the street with the come take it sticker and the, the thin blue line sticker on their, their big monster truck. And, and they, they don't want to have a conversation generally with someone like me. Like they, they don't like any kind of, they're very fragile in their ability to accept things. So I think people who come from a, a, an area that may have a, a little bit more, um, acceptance of different things, they don't understand what that's like. And so yeah. <laughs> that culture yeah, is so important. It's interesting in that regard because it is the live for your die state. Yeah. Um, but it's it tends to be, I think, maybe more conservative up here than people might expect given that we're, you know, we're in sort of generally deep blue New England. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of people up here who are, you know, sort of liberal about this stuff, but then they're sort of conservative about this stuff and yeah. some of the social stuff. Um, you know, same thing, like even, you know, neighboring Vermont, which is, you know, the sort of pinko right. communist, you know, <laughs> paradise, you know, the, 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 the polar opposite you know, philosophically from New Hampshire, they still like their guns, you know, like, so that's like a thing up here. Um, that's a great uh, way to connect. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's, um, it's can be a challenge to connect with people on over time about how we, how we view the world and how we think about it and what we think should happen. And that's, you know, part of the, the, 
the ebb and flow of what's going on up here too. And, and this happens everywhere, right? Like last, the last two years here in New Hampshire, we had a Republican governor, a Republican Senate, Republican house. We got a lot of stuff done. Yeah. Uh, this year it's a Democrat house, Democrat Senate and a Republican governor. And it's going to be kind of, you know, I don't know, two steps forward, one step back or vice versa. Yeah. Um, and that's challenging as an activist to sort of, you know, do that dance over time and recognize mm -hmm. that, you know, that's just the way things work is, is there is sort of a national tide that's happening kind of above us that, that trickles down, especially here with the presidential primary, which is already starting to ramp up here in New Hampshire. Wow. People are starting here and, um, that's, you know, part of the conversation that's going on here, um, is a lot of the national level stuff, which a lot of the people, you know, a lot of the free staters here are essentially have written off, mm -hmm. um, as being beyond repair at this point. Um, so we sort of try to keep our heads down and are here, but if you're, if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in is being part of the national dialogue. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely. New Hampshire is the place to come to be part of that. Sure. And that, that happens walking around, like a bump into a candidate and be like, Oh, that's so-and-so they're running for like dog catcher or whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, so it's, it's, or it's, you know, uh, you know, president or U S Senate or, um, yeah, that's great. I, I, I just, I've, I love the idea of community and the more I think I, I said the more anarchist I get, but the more I learn about different um, solutions that people come up with to solve the problems in their community. It's just, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see people set free to do that and to really mm -hmm. help their fellow man, because most people do it even though they don't have to, they already do that. So mm -hmm. it, it's a, it's a great thing. Um, so what are some of the say accomplishments that, um, the activism has done in, in New Hampshire that you can like put your finger on and say, this is something the free state movement accomplished. Um, it, it's, th there's definitely a, a, quite a few things. Um, but I also want to point out that for every, every, you know, piece of legislation that passes, you know, there might be a free state or a group of free staters that have either led the initiative, you know, the, the effort or the initiative or, or really rallied the sure, troops around sure. it. But you know, the, we have 400 state reps in the state house, right? Like these, you know, and we don't have 200 free state or state reps, right? We had mm -hmm. about a dozen or two dozen, depending on, you know, kind of goes up and down every year. So there's a lot of that, you know, you got to recruit the, you know, the rest of the folks to get on board with your ideas. You have to, you know, sell it on its merits. Yeah. Um, that said, yeah, there's, there's been a lot of progress. There's still a few areas where, um, you know, we still have a lot of work to do, but um, in the last couple of years or so we've got um you know we got constitutional carry um so we actually have um one of the best gun laws in the country now um we're trying to get that in east tennessee of all places <laughs> like you would think that'd be pretty self-evident here but it's not yeah um we decriminalized marijuana uh, small amounts of marijuana we still have a long ways to go on that mm -hmm. um and that's definitely one of those sort of more socially conservative issues that happens here even though every surrounding jurisdiction including canada has you know legalized or or fully decriminalized um so we're a little lone pocket of that but yeah, we did get yeah. small amounts done um we uh accidentally about three or four years ago accidentally there was a, a bill that passed that i think unintentionally regulated or potentially put crypto um cryptocurrency at, at, under the you know, regulatory regime of the state and nobody realized it at the time and so they actually did something. They created a, a cryptocurrency study committee in the state legislature, which is like the first of its of its kind in the in the country. Um, and very quickly out of that passed a amendment to the bill that clearly exempted it from from state regulation. Um, but but that current that committee is is a standing committee. So we now have a standing, you know, crypto wow. committee in the legislature and um, there's some you know friendly people that are on that on that committee obviously. Um, a lot of little things, you know, like we legalized home poker games, which you th would have thought, of <laughs> course, those should be legal. But if you look at it, it's like half the states have have laws against it. Yep. it um, we exempted hair braiding from occupational licensing. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Which, you know, one of those things yep. where you're like, well, yep. duh. But then you yep. look at the map of like who's where it's yep. legal and yep. where it's not. And you're like, oh, we fought it what? in Tennessee. <laughs> like that, that has been an issue. Um, yeah. I'm sure you're aware of not that long ago. That was that was something that came up and. Um, uh, that people aren't allowed to braid hair at home is just, uh, it's ridiculous. I mean, I get people make the argument all the time of, well, there's, 
you know, with cosmetology, there's chemicals and you can hurt somebody. Okay, that aside, this is braiding hair. Right. right. <laughs> like we've silly. been doing this for literally millions of years. <laughs> yeah, I, it's it's ridiculous. But yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just... Um, you know, one of the big draws, um, you know, that it, uh, that was the reason, you know, part of the reason why we chose New Hampshire in the first place and continues to be a, an attractive thing for people moving here is that, you know, we've got very low taxes. Mm. Um, we have no um, broad-based income tax and we have no broad-based sales tax. You know, property taxes are how, how largely how things get done. And there's a corporate tax as well. Um, there's a, a free state or a group of people really, but uh, one in particular who didn't move here. She was, she's from here originally. Um, and she basically got, and this is, took her, you know, better part of a decade um, to get a, a educational tax credit that um, can offset some of those taxes. So like um, Tennessee, I think recently got rid of the interest and dividends tax. Is that right? I'm not sure. I hadn't heard that. Because but... Tennessee and New Hampshire used to be the only two states that had um, no income tax on, on salary, but right. a, a tax on interest and dividends. Okay. And I think Tennessee just recently got rid of it. Um, we still have it, but I should probably there's this that. educational tax credit that you, where you can donate to this organization that basically that uses the money to help kids get out of private, uh, out of public school and into private school, That's particularly cool. if they're having some, you know, either learning challenges or they're gifted or you know whatever mm-hmm. the public school isn't working for them, um, and you can use that donation to offset to get a tax credit, 80 percent tax credit against either the interest and dividends tax as an individual or against the business tax credit. Uh, I'm sorry, the business tax. Um, so it's the kind of thing there where there's these little loopholes that, you know, you can basically make a better election to how you want your money to be used. Um, right. you know, then it if they're going to take be. it from you anyways, right. <laughs> at least you can maybe have some say in directing it to a, a better solution than the one they have now. I Sometimes you know, that's a little bit of that sort of legislative uh, judo that you got to um, engage in yeah. to figure out kind of how to slip around the, the problem without right. going for an outright, you know, tax limit. You, you know, it's, you yeah. say, oh, we should get rid of this tax. People are like, oh, you can't do that. Right. Like, well, how about this tax credit for this worthy cause, you know, whatever. And people are like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. And you expand it over time. And yeah. Um, it's a slow process and it's frustrating, but it works. Yeah. I I was just, um, listening with uh, Mike Meharry and Michael Bolden with the 10th amendment center yesterday. And, and uh, Mike Meharry is, is, um, involved in a, um, one of my projects. And, and we were talking about this recently about this, um, practical sort of political activism where, you know, even though uh, as an anarchist, he's not for the, the system that we have, you have to kind of play ball sometimes with them. And they've done a lot of good work in nullifying those laws. But he was saying exactly with um, marijuana legalization that <clears throat> because I had sort of been of the, the opinion before is like, why even bother with the legalization? What we want is decriminalization. Right. And he was saying that, well, that's what that leads to. It's what it led to in prohibition with alcohol was that, you know, you got a, a little bit here and a little bit there and it, it slowly overturned it. So those those little steps, like you said, you guys got the small amounts legalized. Yeah. Those are radical ideas to people. Like we forget right. that well, that's and, radical. And, and it, and in that, in the case of that for the marijuana, right, is, is the, the big, you know, the big win there is that it, it takes it out of the toolbox of the police to be able to say, Oh, well, I smelled marijuana. So right. then we're going to search and violate like, well, many, many other rights. <laughs> right. It's, it, 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 it's a doorway for them to go through and do a whole bunch of other stuff. So we, it, you know, that is itself is a big win. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's still a hundred dollar violation ticket and whatever, but of course now the cops don't really care so much about it because it's right. not you know, it's not a big win for them. Um, you know, y- yeah, would I much prefer to just completely, you know, decriminalize it? Sure. Is legalizing it and you know, having it be taxed and regulated and all that. Right. Do I like it? No. Is that the maybe the the least bad option that we have? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, I, I think sometimes politics I, is full of terrible choices. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's sorry. True. Yeah. I think even I'm guilty of this a lot myself of, of forgetting, like mixing my philosophy with what is like, I, I want things to be a certain way right. and I want, well, and, and what's worse is that when we, when we ca- let it cause a division amongst our own community, right. Yeah. Where it's like, 
I'm not talking to you. You're for marijuana legalization. Right. <laughs> the state to be, you know, increase their taxes and whatever. And it's like, come on, guys. Like, let's yeah. have a, you know, a civil discussion about it. And at the end of the day, recognize that we're really all on the same team. Yeah. Um, and Even that's the people who, that are on the other side of the aisle. Yeah, when when the shit hits the fan, you're going to want people around you, whether you disagree right. on small e things or not, you're going to want people around you who really believe that they should not harm you. <laughs> you know that it's wrong well, to that's aggress. Funny on that you, you bring that up too, because that's another you know point of 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 conversation, which is you know what about you know uh, current or ex law enforcement or or military? You know, there's a lot of vets who are you know who un, who have the perspective of having been on that that tip of the spear mm -hmm. point that is put into harm's way by this system and yeah. they're over there fighting for you know what and they know it yeah um do we want to you know have those um people come and be part of our community i say you know absolutely yeah. um partly yeah. for the reason you mentioned but also partly because you know you know, somebody who was born into it, you know, if you're a second gener generation libertarian, it's sort of easier to dismiss than somebody who comes from out of, you know, co comes out of that system and says, yeah. Yeah. I know in a way that most of you never will, what the cost of this, yeah. the experiential harm that it mm -hmm. did. Yeah. Um, and that, that can be a much more powerful, uh, you know, story, um, you know, a way to connect with people and their values. And it's also a way to connect with people who might not otherwise listen, you know, say, right you know, to, to command their respect and be like, Oh, you're a vet. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to actually listen to you. Yeah. That's, I, I find that a lot, especially with military and police because they are such a, a brotherhood, you know, they've got this fraternity mm -hmm. idea. And if you're outside of it, um, and we all know when you share a difficult experience with people, you're more bonded with them. And these people go through terrible things. Um, and, and my producer, Daniel, is um, he used to be a drill sergeant, and now he said the reason that he's an anarchist is because of his military career. Like, that's mm -hmm. what brought him <laughs> fully. Right. Uh, and, and I have another friend who's, who's now an anarchist that I knew when he was a teenager. And over the years, as I've moved towards this, staying in contact, now he's, he's also um, an anarchist, and he's like one, three other people. Uh, that he served with to the ideas of libertarianism and anarchism. So, you know, we can't underestimate the impact that we can have with just, you know, one person in a particular area that's hard for most people to break into um, can really do a lot of good in bringing other people that way because they're not going to listen to civilians generally because we don't know how difficult, you know, it's easy to dismiss us, but it's not easy to dismiss someone who actually, um, served just like they, you know, served just like they did. So I, I think that's a really, really important um, thing that we can remember when we're talking to these people is that. Th well, you're, and, and that's what we were talking about at the beginning, too. It's, you know, people on the other side of the ideological spectrum, they don't come at it because they're evil. Generally, right. they come at it because they want to make the world a better place and they want to help people. They just have different mm -hmm. ideas about how to go about doing that. And a lot of people that go into the military, that's. They think that they, at the time, yeah, that that's yeah. a way for them to try to make the world a better, safer place and for them to help people. Yeah. You know, does that work out? I, you know, only they can judge, yeah. really. Um, yeah, I think I, there's, a, there's a difference. Like, I, I, I don't believe you can give your moral agency to anyone. So I do believe you are responsible for everything that you do. However, they are victimized by the same system. <laughs> you know, yeah. that indoctrinating system uh, is very big, the, the civil religion and the, the public school system. Um, and then they just flat out lie to you. I mean, the military will, the recruiters lie. That's a very well-known thing by people in the military. And, um, well, so and, and, and don't forget about, you know, Hollywood. Hollywood yes. tends to quite, you know, glamorize violence in general and, yeah. and specifically military, you know, violence. And, Absolutely. You know, I can see how a kid growing up today watching, you know, Transformers or, right. you, know, whatever, you know, would be like, yeah, I want to be a soldier. Right. Yeah. I want to do, yeah. I fight the bad guys. Them. I want to be, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. There's so many different messages that we get coming at us um, that it's not like, I'm not surprised people are who they are in that way. I, I used to be like, flag wave and neocon, you know, I, I really was, I was a fight them there. So we don't have to fight them here type person. And, um, you know, I look at myself now and go, Oh my goodness. Like 
I, I see those people sometimes and, and think to myself, there's no way they would ever actually want to hear what I have to say. And then I have to remind myself, wait a second, you used to I'm, be that person. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it just seems so foreign now, but it, but it is, you know, put their, ourselves in their shoes and see them as victims. So I, you know, while on one hand, I don't want to dismiss what they've done and you, you sometimes need to hold some people accountable, but we also need to recognize that we've all sort of been victims of the state that, that it's serving its own purpose and it teaches <laughs> us to, to do the things like you care about people. Oh, well, we need a government program for that. And so um, the more people see that happen, the more it happens. So we have to kind of combat it in a different way, but it's, yeah. Well, and, and, you know, I think that we're in the middle of this, you know, new tribal, um, you know, tribal meme war, right? <laughs> tribal identity war. And I, I think a lot of libertarians um, get seduced by the idea of having some giant victory, right? About having Gary Johnson win or, right. you know, whatever. Yeah. It's like, you know, okay, sure. But really the way this is won is at the mimetic level, by which I mean we share our ideas with others in a compelling way, and they, you know, we, we invite them to be receptive. They are. They learn. They shift their ideology and their mindset. And we, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, indiv you know, person by person. It's a very right. small, little, very low-level uh, movement that we're on, and it takes a lot of time. Yeah, and that, and we have to recognize that. I remember reading once that um, all major tragedies start with a series of very small things happening that happen to come together in a way, and it just keeps compounding. And I think liberty and, and any other movement is sort of like that, that it takes, like most of the work is what you said, it's not glamorous, it's, not, it's in the trenches, it's low level, it's, it's doing whatever. But that's really what starts to build the momentum and get to that major victory part where people can go, oh, that's when this happened. But it really starts so long before that. And, and that's, that's really the reason that um, I'm involved in activism because my life would be a lot easier if I didn't have to you know, do a lot of the things I do. I spend a lot of time doing this stuff. But um, I want my kids to have the momentum of what I'm building now Mm -hmm. So that they have something easier to build on and, and it keeps moving from there. So I, I know it gets frustrating for a lot of us sometimes, but it's, it's, it's a good thing to remember that the, the non-glamorous stuff is the real stuff. Like that's the stuff we have to, that it takes doing. Um, not everybody can be the face of something and, and you know, you need to, to have those workers who the mission is more important to them than, their themselves, you know, and, and so, um, and it's all about our, I mean, it's, it involves our self-interest, but it's not everybody's going to be, um, known for this thing, but we all can contribute to what eventually hopefully happens, which is more freedom in our lives times. And then in our children, grandchildren, whatever down the road, it's, it's a generational struggle, right? The price of, of Liberty is eternal vigilance and, yeah. and it comes in cycles and, we, I, I mean, I think we can see it, you know, the general global trend towards, you know, getting a little bit better every year, yeah. um, or maybe every decade, um, you know, overall economically and, and, and for personal liberty as well. Um, but yeah, it's going to always be a thing that we're always going to have to, as a civilization, you know, be mindful of. Right. I think that's something that, um, the, the gay rights activists really, you know, we can take a, a play from their book because I remember, I mean, I, I graduated high school in 1995. So um, from then, the resistance to the idea that people could live their lives the way they saw fit to now is so different. That's not a long time. And no, um, well, it's not a long time, but at the same time, <clears throat> you know, it was 50 years, yeah. right? From, from Stonewall, Stonewall until yeah. today, more or less. Um, God, that's how many, especially because they got hit so hard by the AIDS thing, you yeah. know, how many people died never getting to see the end, right. you know, getting to see where we are today. And it's not, 
it's not over. Right. Um, but it was definitely, you know, it was like a, you know, overnight revolution, you know, 40 years in the making. Yeah. And um, but I, in the whole scope of things, that's really a very short period of time for right. a society to go. I mean, even most of my concert, like very conservative Christian friends will now tell you, well, you know, I don't, I don't care about what people do. I just, I don't want it pushed on me, you know, and, and that's where I think a lot of the resentments of, of things come in is in, in the government and the way the state handles it and forcing people to live like other, you know, and accept things that they, they're not okay with. But I think most people can be convinced that you're better off leaving other people alone um, as long as they're not harming people. And so I, I think that, uh, I think that, that the gay rights activists have really done a lot that we can learn from in how to move culture. Cause I mean, you know, the left, right thing, but the left is really good at moving culture. And mm-hmm. if we can learn how to do that, that's yeah, politics really, is downstream of culture. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Sure. And so I, I know we're coming I, to that. I think that's oh. one the, the crypto movement is really interesting from that perspective. Hmm. Um, and I think, you know, I've gone to a few uh, crypto things and it's interesting to kind of see who's there um, the first big one I went to down in Puerto Rico, you know, early last year, I was shocked at how few people were there as, you know, liberty activists. Um, there was a lot of people there who were into it because they're math geeks or yeah. because they're finance, you know, hmm. bros who are looking for an exciting new way to screw people. Um, or <laughs> they're, the you know, crypto for good people, you know, with a lot of the, you know, sort of woo ideas. And it's like, oh, we're going to have a coin that's going to help, you know poverty or whatever it's like which is fine yeah. but they're not coming at it from a you know decentralized the financial system get the big bank you know get the sure. get the fed out of the way you know all of that um will will that whole industry you know enlighten people to you know what what the importance of having a decentralized system is Mm -hmm. i I think so i think it will help you know a lot of people who come to it because they're like i don't know it's a hot new thing people are talking about it and they get into it and they're like start to you know they get red pilled or you know whatever you want to say it right they're they're uh you know they start to understand you know they as they delve into it they get why wait why is this so important why is this such a revolutionary game changer um and there's certainly there's a lot of people here in new hampshire that are working on that um you know, Vin Armani just moved here. He's working on a you know, coin text where you can text crypto to somebody with a text oh, message. Yeah. And That's a, amazing. And a phone. <laughs> you don't need you don't need the internet. You don't need a computer. You don't you know it's like opens up crypto to you know another billion people. Wow. Um, Naomi Brockwell just moved here. She's a you know pretty well known uh, crypto luminary. MCs a lot of different conferences around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, libraries here. They're you know working on sort of content. Um, you know. Uh, you know, content sharing, um, in a decentralized, uh, manner, well, uh, open yeah. bazaars here. Um, they're, um, you know, building a P2P decentralized marketplace. Hmm. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, libertarians are generally smart people, even outside of the movement, people can recognize like Jonathan Haidt, that they're generally intelligent people. And that's why we tend to be more on the, the male end of the spectrum. There's a lot of really just cut and dry rationalism, but, but all these things are real world things and they affect real people and your passions can get ignited by mm-hmm. this stuff and how it actually helps bring around freedom. So I, I, I feel like I could talk to you all day, uh, but we are coming to the end of our time. And I, I just wanted to ask you, um, is there anything that you would like to mention that we didn't get to about the Free State Project? <laughs> I feel like we talked about so many things, but... You know, really, that's for me personally, when I look at the Free State Project, the the sense of community that it builds, I think, is the most important thing. I think that that is what really matters to people. And even if it's only ever New Hampshire, right, people will have a better quality of life when they're living in a way that they feel that, you know, they're more free. So I, um, I, I think that's that's really important. I'm glad we talked so much about it. But yeah, I think that that's really the primary message is that um, you can't really experience or, or grok the yeah. the power and the 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 potential and the value of the community without coming here and and getting to sample it. So you know, for everyone who's watching this, please do 
um, you know, do yourself a favor, get up here, whether it's for Liberty Forum, which is coming up um, uh, in a couple of weeks here, February 7th, 8th, 9th here in Manchester, or Pork Fest, um, which is uh, third week in June. Um, or, or really, as I said, any other time of the year, like just, you know, sh- come on, get on our website and let us know you're going to be here. And we'll, we'll set you up with um, right. some different right. groups of people. And what get is that? Here, experience it. And, and that's the only way to really understand what's going on up here. What, what is the website? So the website is fsp.org okay. um, or freestateproject.org. Um, or you can find us on Facebook. Um, there's a pretty big group that um, is, is pretty active. Um, we actually have, I don't know, dozens and dozens of this is one of the benefits of this big community, right? It's like, oh, you're into motorcycling? Great. There's a Facebook group for that. Right. Um, you're into, um, you know, uh, knitting? Great. There's a Facebook group for that. Like there's right. a lot, there's, it's big enough that there's little niche uh, groups that are focused on various different things that you can be part of. Right. And and you personally are going to be, <clears throat> pardon me, I, I, I think I saw you're going to be at Anarchapulco this I am going to be speaking at Anarchapulco. Cool. Um, so if you are, if anyone's going to be there and wants to talk more about it, um, I, I'm going to be there. There's going to be some other folks from, from New Hampshire there as well, of course. Um, so yeah, definitely, um, you know, find me there and I'm happy to, to chat more about it. Great. Well, thank you so much, Matt. It's been a, a great conversation and, and I'm, I'm really glad that there are people who, you know, have made the move and are willing to do, do that kind of thing. I think it's a brilliant idea and, uh, I think it's, you know, really inspirational to people to if like for me, I, the cold is really difficult for me. Like even Tennessee is getting a little too cold for me sometimes. So, uh, well, I, I grew up just last, last point. I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona. So oh, okay. I, I, you know, <laughs> and I love yeah. the heat. Like I, that's the one thing about Phoenix I really miss. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, if the cold is the, is the worst sacrifice you have to make for I liberty, like, is it really that bad? And, <laughs> I just put on a pair of long johns and I get in my car, which is in the, the garage. I turn on the seat heaters. It, it's really not that bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you know, I used to live in, um, I lived in upstate New York. I lived in up, mm-hmm. in up the UP of Michigan, like out in a, on a peninsula off the upper peninsula. Yeah. In That's the actually middle way of worse than where we're at. Yeah, we, have I, a much, we have a milder winter than most of that whole Northern, you know, half of the, right. of the middle and the Midwest. And I, I, yeah, I think I psych myself out thinking about that. And, I mean, the, it, it's beautiful. The people are lovely up there. It's just so friggin' cold. And I hate, like, shoveling snow to leave and then shovel again just to get back in. And I, I just, you know, that's what's in my mind. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to go to <laughs> They shovel the walk for me. It's awesome. <laughs> that's I nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Matt. I really appreciate yeah, you uh, coming on today. And, um, Remember, you guys can go to uh, fsp.org and check out all the great stuff they've got going on. And, and I think even better, find somebody who's a part of the Free State Project, um, who's moved there, whatever, and, and talk to them. And you'll really get a feel for what, what it's all about. Um, and yep. that's I've learned so much more just knowing people who are a part of it. Uh, so uh, go do that. And um, until next time, peace.